What's up guys, T-Mart here, and today I've got all the intel you need for the upcoming Blood Orchid expansion for Rainbow Six Siege. So, this expansion is going to include one new map and three new operators. Originally, it was slated to release on August 29th, just a couple of days from now, but unfortunately that had to be delayed a week, so it's now scheduled to come out on September 5th. Now, today, during the Season 2 Pro League Finals, they gave us a little teaser of what to expect from the map and from the new operators. I'm going to be covering everything that we learned from this live stream here in this video. So, what you guys are seeing first is the brand new map, Theme Park. It takes place on the shores of Hong Kong, and this is an old, rundown, abandoned, dilapidated theme park. I mean, you guys can see, you know, it has hints of like the old excitement and fun and bright colors and stuff like that, but it's rundown. It's been abandoned, hasn't been taken care of. It was actually kind of like overtaken by these drug lord squatters. So, like, right next to the arcade room, you've got a meth lab. So, I don't know, it's just, a, it's a very, you know, contradictory map in that sense. Seems kind of cool. You guys will see that a lot of it is very, very dark. Like, I was surprised at how dark this map was, and that's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a, a little weird, a little spooky, and, uh, you know, it's gonna be a little bit different than a lot of the other maps that we see. So, um, it's a pretty basic map in terms of the layout. It's kind of a big square building split into two sections. Those two sections are split in half by a monorail. So, there's the east side and the west side and then there's two stories. So there's a decent amount of verticality here. There's six trap doors, two in the roof, and then four on the second floor. So there's going to be a lot of ways to kind of, you know, get around the enemies, flank around them, that sort of thing. The dev said that it really forces the fight inside the building, whereas a lot of maps you can take over objectives and rooms and stuff like that from the outside and use those, you know, exterior angles and stuff. This one forces the fight inside and there's a lot of of close quarters combat. So it's gonna be very fast, very high action, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to check it out. Now, uh, there are four sections of the map. So there's, you know, like I said, it was split in two. So there's kind of like the, the bottom and top section of the east side and then the bottom and top section of the west side. And those four sections are the arcade, the daycare, the cult hideout, and then the haunted house, which you guys are seeing right here. So, uh, man, I don't know. It's like, again, that contradictory setting where it's like a theme park, but it's outdated. And then we've got arcades and daycares, but we've also got cult hideouts and haunted houses, which is, uh, I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting map. It's going to be very, very intense. And just looking at this, thinking about Cav emerging from the shadows and taking you down and interrogating you is just, oh my gosh, it's horrifying. There's so much going on down here. So we'll see how it plays out. Now let's move on to the operators. And uh, like I said, there are three new operators with this expansion. We've got two defenders and one attacker. And uh, over the past couple of months, we've kind of started to learn more and more about these guys. Like there were little leaks and data mines and stuff like that. And then over the past week, Rainbow's really been hyping it up and giving us little teasers and stuff. And uh, honestly, like, through all the leaks when I was looking at the abilities that these guys were going to have, everything was super passive and there was nothing that I was like super, super excited about, you know what I mean? Like there was nothing that stood out to me, but after seeing them in action and hearing the devs talk about them in this live stream, it actually looks like these guys are going to have a huge role in the meta of this game and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to check them out. So starting off, the first one we're going to talk about is Legion. So he's a defender and his ability is the Goo Mine. So you start with two of these mines and they're actually regenerative. So you start with two at the very beginning of the round and then every 35 seconds it passes, you get another one up to a max of seven, which is insane. And obviously this is a big deal. It puts a huge emphasis on Legion players to stay alive because the deeper in the round you are, the more of these things you've been able to generate and put down and the more effective your ability ultimately is. But uh, yeah, so you have these mines and you throw them down and they create this trap. It's cloaked so enemies can't really see it. And if they run into it, it injects them with this like poison needle type thing. And uh, while this needle is in their body, they can't run, they take an initial 10 points of damage, and then they take reoccurring damage every X number of seconds until they remove this needle from their leg or arm or whatever it strikes them in. And uh, they have to remove it by holding their action button. So they can't run, they've gotta like back up, get behind cover, and then hold their action button to physically remove it. And all this time, you know they're there, you know they can't run, you know they're preoccupied, that sort of thing. So it's gonna be really, really interesting, and it sounds like it's gonna be a pretty effective trap. Now, uh, what does it look like for a lesion? Well, it doesn't give you this huge indicator that somebody's hit, or there's not like a big sound that something went off, but you guys can see 
you do have these little indicators on your screen that show where your little traps are, and that'll disappear when it goes off. So it does give you an indication that something's happened, but you kind of have to be looking for it and you have to be aware. So, you know, it's very powerful, but it's also not as like obvious that it's happened when you're playing on the Legion side. So I don't know, like this, this sounds pretty interesting. And um, as an overall character, he's got a two speed and two armor. He's got a silent shotgun and SMG as his primaries, as well as a pistol. And he's got an impact grenade or a deployable shield. And this is really interesting because he's got that deployable shield and then he also has these cloaked mines. So think about the deployable shield to welcome that strat with frost. You can do that same sort of thing. You put a deployable shield up in a doorway, you put this tiny little cloaked mine behind it, somebody comes running through, jumps over that deployable shield into the objective room, boom, all of a sudden they're injected, they're hurting, their vision is blurred, that sort of thing. There's a lot of uses for this, whether you're actively defending a room or if you're trying to set up to stop rushers and that sort of thing. So I think he's gonna be pretty good. Now, in terms of his counters, what can work against him? Well, bullets and explosions will destroy the goo. IQ can detect it. Thatcher will take it out, Twitch can take it out, and then if you happen to deploy it next to a charged wall or a charged, you know, barbed wire or something like that, your own team's bandit can take it out as well. But uh, overall, very interesting trap type character. I can't wait to check him out. Let's move on to the second operator. Next up, we've got Ying, and honestly, she's probably the operator that I'm most excited to use. I just think she's gonna be really, really good. So, she's an attacker, and her ability is the Candela, which is this little ball of goodness that contains a bunch of flashbangs. So, when this thing detonates, it explodes into a bunch of flashbangs that spread out and flash pretty much an entire room, which already sounds good enough, right? Well, listen to the ways that she can set this thing off. So, you can use it like a normal piece of equipment, just throw it in the room, it'll explode into a bunch of flashbangs, things and flash the entire room. That's good. You can also roll it into a room or through a little drone hole or underneath a barricade or something like that. You guys can see that you can throw it down and roll it against walls. It will follow those walls all the way until it finds a way into the room and then boom, it goes through there and sets it off, which is absolutely insane. Finally, last but not least, she can actually plant it on the wall and send flashes through the wall just like Fuse does with his grenades and there's a timer that you can set. So you can set it for a longer time before it goes off. You set it off, you leave it there, you've got a certain number of seconds. You can set up, like you're seeing here, this guy has the breaching charge, so you can have the flashbangs go off right as you hit the breaching charge, and it just causes ultimate chaos in this room, and I don't know, man, like it's just, it, it's really, really cool in that regard. And if that wasn't good enough, she's also not affected by her own flashes. She can be flashed by other operators, but she is not affected by her flashes. So when you throw this in and it goes off, you can be breaching in the room while the flashbangs are going off right in the middle of everything, and you're not gonna be flashed at all, whereas everybody else is. Absolutely insane. She's gonna be so much fun, and she's just, I mean, she's the ultimate chaos creating operator. Now, in terms of her other features, she's a two speed, two armor operator. For primaries, you could choose between a shotgun or an LMG pistol secondary, and uh, then for equipment, she's got a claymore or a smoke grenade. Now, think about this. Who else on the attacking side really likes smokes? Glass, because he can see through them with his rifles. So think about a situation where you're breaching an objective room, like secure area or something like that. You set up your candela on the wall on a timer to shoot off flashes here in a few seconds. You and Glass both pop smokes in that room and then you start breaching, and guess what? You're not affected by the flashes. Glass isn't affected by the smokes. It's just like, like I said, she is the ultimate just chaotic hazard creating operator and I think she's gonna be a lot of fun to use. Now, finally, last but not least, she does have some counters. So bullets can destroy the candela grenade and cancel the cluster flash. Uh, obviously, this thing moves pretty quickly so it's gonna be kinda hard to hit. Uh, they did say that barbed wire will slow it down. So if you have barbed wire, you try to throw it through the barbed wire, it's gonna slow it down enemies are probably gonna be able to take it out, so you wanna try not to throw it into barbed wire. Uh, also, Jaeger's ADS will destroy the candela, but if you're able to get it to go off, so like say you set it on the wall and project these flashes through the wall, Jaeger's ADS will take out those clusters, but I think they said that from one candela, all the flashes that go in there would take out all three of Jaeger's ADSs. So think about that, how you can completely remove Jaeger's ability from the game just with one of your candelas. And then I think you have like another one or two left after that. So that's pretty impressive. And uh, then finally, of course, Bandit's battery will take out that candela grenade as well. So 
Overall, like I said, very, very excited to see what Ying can do. I think she's going to be huge. It's the only offensive operator from this expansion, and uh, I think you guys are going to see a lot of her in online matches. So finally, let's move on to our last operator, Ela. So Ela is going to be a very interesting operator here, and her strong suit really isn't her ability. I would say this is probably the weakest ability of the three operators that we've seen. So it's called the Gersmot mine, the GRZ MOT mine, basically a concussion mine. So you guys can see here, you whip it out and you can throw it on ceilings, walls, floors, that sort of thing. It sticks to materials and then when somebody gets in range of it, it'll explode and it concusses them, just like getting hit with Echo's drone. So it blurs your vision a little bit, it slows you down, you can't look around quite as quickly, but you still have full control, you can still shoot and that sort of thing. So really it's more of a, a warning if anything like it, it lets her know that somebody's in that area and then hopefully she's close enough that she can go run and pick up that kill but apart from that it's not like a, a super super effective ability where she stands out is her gunplay so she's a three speed one armor operator so she's kind of this roamer trapper type role she wants to flank around get around the enemies take them out that sort of thing she's got a fairly good shotgun and then also her smg the scorpion Based off of what we've seen so far, based off the stats and little gameplay we've seen, it seems like it could be shaping up to be one of the best SMGs in the game, if not the best SMG. So it's got a super high fire rate with low recoil and a huge 50 round magazine. So think about Mira's Vector, except with 50 rounds in the mag, and it's got lower recoil, that sort of thing. Like it's gonna be so, 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 so good. And obviously she's got the three speed there, so she's gonna be able to move quickly and flank. So, you know, that's obviously a really good combo. Even her secondary is really good. She's got the only pistol to have a red dot sight on it. So, you know, even though you have this SMG and the shotgun, which are meant for close range, boom, now all of a sudden you've got a pistol with a good sight that you could potentially end up sniping and taking headshots from a distance, which obviously is really good. And uh, then for her equipment, she's got barbed wire or an impact grenade, which again, for that roamer roll, the impact grenade, you can blow up walls and get behind enemies and create these routes that they don't expect you to come from. So that's really where her main role is gonna be. Like, yeah, her concussion mines are, are decent, but um, I think her gunplay is gonna be way more important. So she's gonna be fun to play. She's a roamer, kind of like Cav. Now, uh, in terms of her weaknesses and stuff, who can take out her little concussion mines? Bullets and explosions will take it out. IQ can detect it. Thatch can take him out. Twitch can take it out. Bandit will destroy it if you get it too close to a shocked wall or something like that. So the obvious stuff there. But uh, again, like I said, I don't think her ability, those concussion mines, are really the main focus. Like, yes, they're great. They're going to be a good warning sign. It kind of, you know, helps you block off where enemies could be coming from and warns you when they're there. But I think the main focus is she's got that three speed with that really, really beastly SMG or even a pretty good shotgun too. So she's going to be an interesting defender and definitely somebody to watch out for. So uh, boom, there you guys have it. The three new operators coming to Rainbow Six Siege and the new map coming to Rainbow Six Siege here in just over a week. I'm super excited. I can't wait to bring you guys gameplay. Let me know what you guys think and which operator are you most excited for? Legion with the goo mines, Ying with the candle grenades, or Ela with the concussion mines and the beastly SMG. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna catch you guys later. Peace out.